This video is hopefully going to be one of the most instructive beginner chess lessons you've ever seen. I did it a couple of days ago on stream with Myth, who's playing in PogChamps 3. We played a game, we talked through our thought process, and I've split this video into three parts of the opening, middle game, and end game. Hope you enjoy. All right. Cool. Talk out your thought process. What was the first move? So the first move is King's Pawn Open. Beautiful. E4. E4. Yes. Okay, I'm like 500, so I just learned this from a, a YouTube video. Now what? Okay. Uh, I want to... Well, so I want to protect my pawn. And since I can't move forward, so I'm going to do uh, B... Th I'm going to do C3 with knight. Okay, knight C3 is not bad. Knight F3 was what we were looking at. Oh, wait, were we? Yes. Oh, shoot. Okay, no, let's go back. Sorry, I forgot. Oh, I, yeah, no, I wrote it down. Knight to F3. Okay, wait. Could, could you do no, no, well, knight C3 is not bad. It's okay. <laughs> we'll, we'll get there. We'll get there. Knight C3 is okay. not bad. I like this. Uh, I'm going to go bishop B4. You're going to go bishop B4. I want to hear Got this. Got it. Like, what's the, what's the first thing that's going through your mind? What do you, you know? The first thing, okay, so yeah, I'll, I'll try to break it down more. Uh, the first thing that went in my mind is like, okay, this motherfucker went aggressive. Like, it's kind of wild. <laughs> um, so, I want to, like, I also want to, like, make you go away. So, I also, like, I kind of want to threaten your bishop with pawn a3. Um, but I also think that, no, yeah, like, I guess that's all my, all my thoughts so far. Okay, well. Or I could even, or I could even just like develop my, um, my, uh, shoot, where's my brain here? I could develop my knight to f3 here and then pressure your pawn and t for, to try to get like more mid control of the map That's... since you went so like hard in the paint. There you really go. Really early on. I think we just combined like a sport, another sport, and like three video games. Knight f3 is, uh, absolutely, <laughs> like, absolutely. Like, A3 was, so, so play Knight F3 so that at least my clock runs, and then I, I just don't want you to get too okay. low on time. Okay. So, uh, when Bishop B4 happens, like, a move comes, you gotta go, what do they want? Mm hmm Like, that's the first, what do they want? Are they threatening anything? You could also be like, e you know, that mofo is aggressive, but also, you know, like, are they, if I take your Knight, is it so good for me? No. No. It's fine, yeah. but you don't need to chase. You don't need to always react. You go, do I need to chase? Agreed. Nah, let me just develop. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going to go here. Now, of course, a bonus lesson to that, like with this move, what do I want? I'm guarding my center point. Now, yes. evaluate my move. Is it good or bad, the move that I just played? Evaluate your, your move? Let me think. It's the opening, um, so what do you think? I, I, I don't think your move was the best move. Why? I think instead of guarding, uh, I think instead of guarding, you could have developed in the center more, and yep. then had a stronger opening. Yeah, I could have moved my. I could have went knight c six. And then maybe. your bishop, other bishop, would have been free. Like you would have had ah. more options. Perfect. Towards so your transition to mid game. D six instead of F six. I like that. Yes, you're right. My bishop could have gotten out. Also, my my pawn move takes away what square from one of my pieces. It takes away your square from your knight. Yeah, and then it puts him on the side of the board, which is away from center. Yes. Amazing. All right, talk me through a couple okay. of ideas for yourself. Um, my idea for myself is. To actually, you do, well, the one idea I have in my mind is pawn to d4, and that lets me strengthen my center, but then it also allows me to open up my, uh, my bishops, like both my bishops, and it also allows me to castle later on, like earlier. Yes, so here, pawn to d4. And then if you trade, yeah. I like it. And it also, I have my knight covers my pawn there, so I'm comfortable with that move as well. Like, if you take, it's like, okay. Yes, so... This is, first of all, this is what we, this is what we worked on. Like, you know, you, you guard the center with the knight. Now you can push. Uh, another good mm -hmm. move for you, if you want, I, so if you draw arrows when, when we're playing, I can't see it. But if you mm -hmm. want to draw an arrow with your light squared bishop to c4, right next to my, right next to my bishop, your bishop sees the entire diagonal. I don't know if you see that on your board, but you would look oh, all the way draw. down. Right the, click. The, the c1 bishop? 
The the F one bishop to C four. Oh, the F one bishop to C four. Yeah. Can you not draw arrows, or do you have that enabled? I can't draw arrows right now. I usually have it enabled, though. So top right by my clock, there's a cogwheel. Just hit it, and then uh -huh. uh, the right under dark mode, it says right button, draw arrows and highlights. In the settings. Dark mode. Should be right under it. Oh, okay, there we go. Okay, yeah, I got it now. Easy. Okay. But yeah, yeah. That bishop to c4, yeah, I could see down everything. Which is one of the reasons why see me all putting... Down. All my pawns on dark squares is not good. Also, I got mm -hmm. you an hour on the clock, so you'll never lose on time. Cool. <laughs> there you go. So there. Uh, now we can at least talk through all the moves. Okay, uh, I'm going to take. What do you want to do? Mm -hmm. I want to take. Yeah, with what? With, um, with knight. Okay. Easy. I like that you did not suggest that you were going to take with the queen <laughs> to attack my bishop. Because mm -hmm. that's getting a little tunnel vision. I like this a lot better. Let's go here. Mm. Okay, so I, right now, like, okay, so right after you made that move, I noticed that, like, hey, you don't really, you don't really get anywhere. And the only place that, like, you could get to is, like, threatening my um my other knight or you could like travel down the right side of the board and go like attack pawns so the first thing that i think about here is developing uh, a bishop and moving my bishop across the board to which square mm, i really like the idea of c4 that you gave me mm -hmm. bishop c4 is good developing the other yeah. bishop is good yeah it's and better it's like Kind of cuts the board in half for them as well, like on the right side. So play bishop c4, as long as it's not a blunder. Mm -hmm. um, okay, and see, I did myself a disservice because now I can't castle. Yeah. So if I can't castle... Uh, let's do... Okay, I'm going to take... I mean, this one we don't really need to think about too much. Mm -hmm. I just take. <laughs> yeah, there's nothing. But, you know, people don't know what to do, so they'll take something. Okay, yeah. so how has that trade affected the position? Like, when I ask that question, mm -hmm. what comes to mind? If anything, I'm also just happy so, to... So the, the first thing that comes to mind is, like, my center is only established by one pawn and... To and like a bishop and a knight now, instead of me being able to bring this other knight, uh, no, the other pawn forward mm -hmm. and like establish that as part of my center later in the game once I move the bishop, uh, because it's like double stacked by this other one now. Um, so these like pawns are always going to be together unless yep. like I do something about that in the future. Yes. Um, so I so that's damage like the first your pawn thing structure. that comes into my mind. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Perfect. What else? Um. Other than that, well, now I know, like, you don't have another diagonal to work with. So I also, like, right after this, I came to my mind that I want to activate, like, my other bishop as well. Oh, well, I, well, I want to castle first, and then I want to activate my other bishop. Yes, you want to get out your dark squared bishop. You're the only guy who has a dark squared bishop now. So uh -huh. there's going to be moments where the dark squares are going to be really weak. And so mm -hmm. you'll be able to use kind of... And also, one thing, the B file is open. So who can go to the, the B, B file for you? File. Yeah. What's a B file? Every oh, square. Oh, just like on... this, like. Okay, okay, gotcha. Uh, my rook can. Yeah. I so... mean, my yeah, my rook. Yeah. Exactly. So having my rook there would be really good. So like, I mean, it's not saying like you immediately have to do it, but in the future. Yeah, yeah. Rook b1, and you see the entire length of the board. So. Mm -hmm. Now I'm gonna play a. I'm gonna play an interesting move. This is gonna. So this is opening the position. When I say, what does that mean? Mm -hmm. It means I'm trading more pawns. The more pawns that get traded, the more lines open up. So, mm -hmm. how do you feel about this move? Um, well, the first thing that I look at is like, okay, what is, what is this pawn threatening? And then after that, I look at like, okay, what are like my aggressive options against this pawn to get rid of it? And I think pawn here, and then take, and then take. But then there's also queen here. But like if the queen takes there, you know, I just 
take and then it's kind of free. Yep. Um, so that's like the first thing that I think of instantly. Well, actually, no, the first thing that I thought of was like the bishop take here. But then I thought about like the trade down the line and it didn't make sense. So mm -hmm. I figured it would make more sense with pawn initially so that you could trade, trade, um, trade, trade. Okay, so you just said something very important. You notice how the first thing you thought of was taking like the entire distance down. You said pawn takes, knight takes, bishop takes, queen takes. Mm -hmm. And you're evaluating that position. So the mistake that you're making there is that you should go one step at a time. So mm -hmm. first go take with the pawn. Yeah, they take, take with the, the knight. How does that mm -hmm. position after the knight gets there, is it good for me? Do I like that position? Do I have to take the knight? You don't have to take the knight. True. Right? Like that's the mistake that's being made there. Your bishop is good. Uh, taking the pawn is good. It's good for you, obviously. I mean, what else are you going to do? Move the bishop? I'm going to take your pawn then. Yeah. So if you take and then I take with the knight, then you have to evaluate what you like and don't like there. If my knight lands About into the, the middle. Being there. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Um. And I guess, yeah, that's a good point because I don't necessarily have to, like, I don't necessarily have to take your pawn if your knight is put in a position where, like, he's just inactive and doesn't do anything and allows me to, like, move about the board, uh, like, better for me, right? Yes. Now, the position is opening up, so you're going to have resources now to attack me with, right? So one of your mm -hmm. most powerful pieces in this position, well, the most powerful piece you always have is what? Most powerful piece in this current position? In all positions. What's the most powerful piece you have? I have no idea. Your queen. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay, so... <laughs> so okay, gotcha. I, okay, yeah. So you always need to be thinking, like, how can I at some point get my queen in... I mean, by the way, I shouldn't say all positions. You're going to have a position, there's no queens. So in that position, it will be a, a rook, a bishop, a knight, a king. Yeah, yeah. A pawn, you know? End games, pawn. So... Your queen will be more useful on all these open lines as the board opens up. Plus, small mm -hmm. thing to keep in mind. You have two bishops, right? I have one. Yep. Uh, bishops like open lines. Mm -hmm. That should give you everything you need to know. So, if bishops like open lines, should you trade in the center? Bishops like open lines, should you trade in the center? Um, open the board. Yeah. Yeah. So that's yeah, a little like framework. So take on d5 with the pawn. Mm -hmm. Don't give away your bishop. Okay. Take with the pawn. Yep. Um, okay. You have a very aggressive queen move in this position. Like, I, I still haven't moved yet, but what is your most aggressive queen move? My most aggressive queen move? Um... Oh, it's queen to h5. Yes. And then I check. If I took back your pawn on d5 with my mm -hmm. knight, with my knight, you would give me that check, and then you would be attacking my knight again and my king. True. Can... So see, I'm, I, I don't want to do that because I don't want to get you know because after that it's like mate in a few moves probably. So I don't want to do that. I'm gonna mm -hmm. like pretend like oh I yeah. caught that you know I'm I'm so smart. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. So I'm gonna go here. Mm -hmm. And now it's back in your hands again. So I'm mm -hmm. down a pawn. I messed up. Okay. Yeah. So uh, now what? Now what should you do? How can you continue to make your position better? Uh, I could check b5 and then activate my other bishop. So I like that the first thing that you spotted is a check. It's the only check you have. Now you have to decide is that a good check? Does that improve your position or not? I like to think so. What am I going to do when you, the reason when you play that? Uh, what you're going to do when you play that? You're going to... Sorry, I you also... think you would just move king, right? No, I'm going to... If I move my king, remember I can't castle. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, true. Oh, no, you're, you're going you're gonna to block with, with queen and then take and then, like, threaten bishop. No, oh, or you just move pawn forward. Okay, so actually... Yeah, yeah you just move pawn forward, actually. You, you, you and I are both... Uh... First of all, I said that's the only check you have, and that's just not accurate. You can also check me with your queen, straight down. Uh, I don't know why I just... 
Oh, true. L- literally forgot about that for half a second. <laughs> um, I like said that and was like, wait, I'm an idiot. What am I talking about? Now, I, I probably just was like, okay, queen check doesn't do anything because I block with my queen. We trade queens. Life goes on. Mm-hmm. If the bishop blocks, sorry, if the bishop checks on b5 right now, my pawn can, checks, yeah. my pawn cannot mm-hmm. block. It can't. Like, I, it's a legal move. But oh, wait, how really? many of your yeah? Because how many of your pieces see the c6 square? C6, one, one piece. My knight. Oh no, two. Two. The uh, pawn and the knight. And when your bishop is on b5, what else? Your bishop when also my bishop sees is it. On b5, my bishop also sees it. So that's three. Okay, yeah, that's three. Oh wait, okay, gotcha. So I can't play c6. Mm-hmm. True. I'll block with the bishop, probably. That's what I'll do. Always think about that. Like, if I can block with the bishop, then you got to decide if you want to trade bishops with me. If you check me on b5, I'm going to block with my bishop. Do you want a bishop trade? I don't think I do, actually. <laughs> yeah, it's it's tough, reasoning, right? It's it's, it's yeah. Difficult. Reasoning wise, because like, I think like, so if I go for a bishop trade, then like we we throw away the advantage of me having two bishops. But then you have zero bishops, and I have one. But I also don't feel like in your current position, your bishop is uh. Like, your bishop isn't really doing anything right now to where I feel like it's worth trading, if that makes sense. Like, it's, it's positioning around the board compared to, like, where my pieces are doesn't allow it to, like, do much. Like, I, don't, I don't see many moves where, where you're put in, in a good position with your bishop after this. So I'd rather just leave your bishop sort of, like, kind of isolated and let it do its thing than me going for the bishop. Yes, your bishop is better than mine. Like, exa- yeah. I, I don't mean to, like, you explain it long-winded. I don't mean to be like, all right, you could be explained it in five no, words. Yeah, I'm just saying. The way you did it was really, yeah, you explained it really well. Yeah. I just want you to think about it like that. You're absolutely right. It, literally, like, draw, like, my bishop, where's it ever going to go? I can't move two squares. I can't move three squares. I can't move four squares. I can't move five squares. My bishop literally mm-hmm. cannot move. Like, <laughs> it can yeah. only move one square. So you're going to enable it to make its only move and then trade it? Nah. How can we make our yeah. position better? What have we not done here yet, for example? We haven't castled? Yeah. Easy move. Like, get the yeah. king out of the center, and then, you know, if you can't destroy me right away, just... All right, so there you go. Like, very good. Mm-hmm. And you're going to start picking this up without all of these explanations. You're going to be like, can I check with the bishop? Ah, the bishop just blocks. Never mind. It's bad. Mm-hmm. Um... All right, I'm going to go here. I'm also castling. Oh, I like that. All right, now what? Ooh, actually, oh, kind of. Okay, no, never mind. Um, now, now I think I'm. So okay, so the first thing that I'm doing right now is like I'm I'm double checking like uh what this knight where this knight can and can't go and like what it can see and can't see um just so that i like like with, with the idea of, of trying to find some sort of check with your with your um with your king mm-hmm. but i don't really see anything that's worthwhile there so i feel like i actually really want to really want to activate this bishop and start getting like these lanes going okay like, these crosses so, how would you do that diagonals yeah the diagonals yes yeah, so how um, can you activate the bishop on a long diagonal is what we would call that yeah the only issue with that is that i actually don't see okay well no that's not true like if okay so if i move it to the right i don't really see anything that like okay i really don't want to block this this e lane Mm-hmm. I really don't want to block it, is, is my thought. Because I feel like I could do a lot of interesting things with my queen and my rook later in the game. 
later on in the game with them working together and covering each other's backs. Um, so part of me just... Part of me just wants to move it, like, 8-3. I'm so proud. I've been holding the bishop on a3 for like 40 seconds waiting to see if you'd spot it. And uh, you notice how you stare to the other yeah. side of the board and the, what's in its sights? Yeah, it's the, uh, the rook. Yeah. Yeah. What's interesting, so I wasn't going to point out this move, but a mm -hmm. move before I castled, when my king was in the middle... I was gonna, I actually, that's why I said right before that, because I was thinking, I was like, maybe I could have just threatened, um, I could have checked with queen and then mm -hmm. stopped you from castling, right? Well, if, if you check with the queen before we both castled, when both of our kings were in the middle, and you could get to that position, you know that, right? You could just use the back arrow, like you could just tap a couple moves back, and that will just mm -hmm. show that position. You can't edit oh, it, okay. obviously, <laughs> but that would, it'll just show you yeah. kind of the, the game history. Um, Bishop a3 prevented me from castling because I can't castle Ooh. through a check. I see. If, if that makes sense. I can't castle yeah. out of a check. So if you check me, I can't castle. But if you block my king's path to castling... So I was like, I actually wrote in my chat, somebody was like, Bishop a3, I get backseated a lot during these lessons. Like, I should tell you this mm -hmm. and this. And I was like, Bishop a3 is a little bit too much. But... Mm -hmm. you said I want to activate my bishop you said I don't want to activate it to the other side of the board because there's nothing there and then you said bishop a3 what? <laughs> dude I'm blown away right now alright let's keep this rolling I like this I'm gonna go here um, oh did you move already? I just moved yeah I moved my rook out of danger Okay. wow you seem very again you seem very zen about all this but I'm, I'm impressed so thank you um I okay, so now like I, I really like where my my pieces are placed in like the center. Like I really like where the knight and my bishops are. And the only pieces that I think that like aren't activated yet that I really do want to activate are my rooks. Like I feel like I want to get my rooks out here and then start like making moves mm -hmm. and start putting pressure on the board. Um, so, oh, uh, so like, or, nay, 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 um, well, yeah, I guess move, I like, I kind of, yeah, I, I want to move my, my rook to, uh, E1. Okay. And that would be a trade if I were to take it, right? Yeah, it would be. So rookie one is one idea. So generally... The, like, the, the advanced thought process in chess is you, you, you have like multiple ideas every move. This is a perfect position mm -hmm. where you can play maybe five different moves and you maintain your advantage. Mm -hmm. uh, so the question is, once again, let's actually go like, I, I do want you thinking that through that hierarchy, like before yeah, yeah. you play a move like rookie one, you can give a check by the way, in this position. It is just hidden. Where's your check? Your bishop check? and my king are on the same diagonal, yeah. Uh, uh, wait. I'm not saying do it, but if you push your yeah, d5 I, pawn, I you just, see that, right? D5 pawn? If you had pushed it to d6 one square, your bishop checks my uh -huh. king. I'm not saying do it, I'm just saying it's a possibility. You see that? Oh, the bishop does. Oh, yeah, 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 the white diagonal. Yeah. Yeah, I see that. So, you know, then your pawn can take my pawn next move, but my mm -hmm. queen just takes back. So, yeah. But nothing, you know. How do you create a threat? Your rook move isn't isn't a threat creator. I mean, it's just you know you mm -hmm. see my rook, but you have a move here that creates a threat, like threatening to take something of value. Mm. I'm There's thinking. Only one move. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, is it? Oh, the queen h5? Okay, so first of all, queen h5 is like an outstanding move. Uh, it's just really annoying for me. But it's not threatening mm -hmm. to take anything. But it is a great move. That's an excellent move. Oh, threatening, idea. okay, yeah, threatening to take. I forget, like, I, so I confuse the terms like take and, uh, like, threatening to take and just, like, vision. Because it just has vision on the... 
Yes. So queen um, h5 would be like I activate yeah. my queen and now I'm in your I'm I'm basically up up in your face <laughs> like queen h5. So Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Where's the move? <laughs> oh man. Um Oh. Oh, I uh knight to e6 and then i guess it's covered by bishop but it threatens to take queen yes i just want you to even see this move because inherently you're like i want to put a rook or a queen on the e yeah. file i don't want to but yeah knight e6 mm -hmm. it's a it's a, a good move you know you got a lot of good moves yeah. here so oh you just played it okay <laughs> that you oh. really liked it i like this move yeah uh... i feel like it opens up the game a little Yes. It does. I have to decide between taking your knight and then moving my queen up one square. Um, mm -hmm. I've been sort of just making moves and then letting you work through a thought process. So here's my thought process. Taking the knight alleviates pressure. So, like, your knight is really annoying. Your pawn gets closer to becoming a queen if, if you take back. It's going to be defended mm -hmm. by your bishop, which I don't like. But when your pawn takes back... My queen sees your queen. Do you notice that? Yeah. So I take, you take. I can take your queen, but you can take back. Mm -hmm. Do I want to trade of pieces like of that magnitude? Personally? Mm, I don't think so. So, so I was actually going to say, I think I do want yeah. to trade. Be yeah, because if you are under pressure, mm -hmm. if you are under pressure by your opponent's pieces, if you are under pressure, they are attacking you getting rid of some of the pieces of their army will help you. Like, if I don't ever have to worry about your queen beating me up and going over to h5, I'm happy. Yeah. I think. I don't... That's chess. That's how it works. Mm -hmm. um, so, let's do that. I'm not saying, like, black is winning. I'm just saying the position's gonna change now. So, mm -hmm. before you go knight e6, you have to ask yourself, do I like my position if we trade queens and if we trade knight for bishop and if the answer is no you don't play knight e6 you play something else so but in this case a queen trade is okay like the game goes on mm -hmm. so i took mm, yeah I, I see you took you took that and so i could take with pawn yep. and yeah you trade with queen just take just definitely take? just just okay. take because because the thing is you know, I don't want you to end up convincing yourself, like, I don't want my queen traded, so oh, I'm nice. not going to even take the bishop, right? Like, <laughs> yeah, e easy. Just take the bishop. It's the best move. Don't even think. I You might not like it, but... Mm -hmm. uh, and you go, okay, so what was my mistake? My mistake was going for the queen trade. Because you wanted to activate your yeah. queen. But okay. Like, did you blunder? Mm -hmm. No. So... No, yeah. Now, what, take... rook, what rook? This is a big question. What Ooh. rook should you take with? Uh... I want to take with the A1 rook, actually. I was going to go for F1, but then I realized that activating with, um, or like doing it with the A1 rook would also activate that rook in general and like get it moving around the board. Yeah, so if you take with the F rook, the one that's near your king, your other rook can be activated on the B file, which you said a while back. Uh, but if you, mm -hmm. if you take with the A rook now, your F rook will go to E1 and they'll be like, you know, like Fusli said, like Rook Bros, uh, yeah. on the uh, on the central file. So up to you, man. Up to you. Whatever you like. There you go. I like this. There you go. Um, so now it's also a knights versus bishops situation. Um, mm -hmm. Knight versus bishop. Okay. So see, I I'm looking. Your rook is not attacking anything. So I'm gonna go knight c6 just developing my knight okay um i think i want to okay yeah i want to move i want to get these rooks to like reinforce the center of the board together and move them and move this um this f1 rook to e1 and then start like progressing forward the board and like re 
regain like strength in the center of the board. Uh, and like that's the way I'm thinking about this. So I'm going to move F to E1. Yes. Rook F to E1. Um, I cannot activate. Like, I cannot copy you. So yeah. one thing that might happen here is black plays Rook A, D8. Because you, you have both Rooks in the middle. I want both Rooks in the middle. Yeah. Why is Rook A D8 a losing mistake? You rook can yeah a so if, to D8. So, yeah, so if my A Rook moves to D8 to counteract okay. your Rook, how do you win the game there in one move? I'm not gonna play it because I, I don't want to lose. Okay, let me think. <laughs> um. Okay, so your move. I can. Uh, okay, move. Okay, so your, your Rook goes my rook takes yours takes and you're still not finding the most forcing move first you're still reacting remember you have an even more forcing move hmm. so the check before the capture you still have a check in this position it's still there oh yeah the the um the pawn i forgot about this pawn moving yep the pawn up yeah and, and then and... the checks and then it's a check, and your pawn would attack my rook. Yeah. And you would win my rook, and ideally go on to then, you know, win the game. So True. Uh, I'm going to block that from happening. So you cannot push okay. now. But my move is, mm -hmm. in, in one word, you can describe my move as what? Passive. It's a very passive move that I just played. Yeah. So yeah, for what sure. Is, what is your best move now? Um, now what? My best move now? Yeah. How do you continue to try to make progress? Seems like you've maximized everything. So now what? I want to... Hmm. Well, yeah, so I don't have the ability to, like... I want to... I, wanna, I... Oh, dude, I don't know. Okay, so... <laughs> I really still want to like move and activate my my rooks like on the right side of the board cuz I feel like I feel like I could gain a lot of control of the board if I start migrating and looking for for trades and pieces on the right side especially with my bishop my my, my bishops um looking on the diagonals here still like I feel like I have to make a move and free up some of the pieces that are on like this right side or like put pressure on the right side so how do you plan on doing that? By like, by moving up my rooks. To where? Um, so the first thing that I was thinking of is moving, like, um, moving my my d one to d three, and then that still like puts you in a place where like you can't really move yet. And then I want to like move my e rook across and right to the board to like. Um, e3 and then more to like and then to like uh, g3 okay so you want your rooks to stare at me from like h and g directly at my king yeah so I'll tell you well, right I now I don't want to move I don't want to move this rook off of d3 yet because I feel like yeah like if I, if I move my rooks too much or if I like open up this center then it just puts me in a place where I can get checkmated and I don't want that. So the back rank checkmate is what you're talking about. A checkmate where, you know, your king has no, uh, <laughs> you know, your king has nothing protecting it on the, on the back rank at all. Yeah. Uh, well, you can prepare for that by, you know, giving your king breathing room. Yeah. Uh, by moving pawns. Right. Now, you, you can just play a lazy move like h2 to h3 so that your, your king has a getaway square. But you have a very mm -hmm. instructive pawn move in this position that I, that I just want to show you. Um, and mm -hmm. it's, it's from the perspective of controlling my pieces. Like, pawn moves can be lazy, like, you know, one pawn on the right side of your king so that it gets away. If you... So, my c6 knight can go to mm -hmm. e5. It can, my, my knight on c6 can go to e5, protected by my pawn from your rook. If I go to e5, and what am I attacking on the e5 square? 
my bishop. Good. How do you prevent my knight from ever getting to e5 and creating some space for your king? Um, shoot. Mm. Wait, sorry, can you rephrase that? Absolutely. Control the F, uh, well, I just said... The controlling E5, right? Controlling I, mean, I want e the knight to move to E5, right? Yeah, controlling E5 with the first letter of the, of the answer. <laughs> I did what teachers do. Uh, so, how would you stop that? Would I move? Would I... My thought was like moving the um, moving my a three bishop over to like a two move step to like e uh, d four. Well, actually, that does kind of stop it, but you could stop it with remember you're trying to do oh, wait, two things. Two things. Also, give your king breathing uh -huh. room so your king can get out. Yeah. Oh, my king breathing room. Um, yeah. With a, uh, so the, there's a there's a move I can make to give my king breathing room and also yes. make it so like so that this knight can't move. I can't I, so that I can't move to the middle because I will get captured and not with the rook. F four with your pawn. Oh yeah, the pawn. Yeah. Shoot. Yeah. And then that, he's able to move. This is not Ooh. a 366 elo, uh, you know. But I I do want you thinking about like. Yeah, yeah, it's important. It, this is... I mean, dude, you, trust me, your, your explanations in this game have not been... Uh, have not been three... It's just funny. It, it, chess mm -hmm. has ELO hell. Like, a lot of people are playing right now, <laughs> and then, you know, they're trading rating points in certain intervals, and, like, th there's a lot of very strong players. That person that you played, the game we analyzed, that was mm -hmm. much higher ELO than 460, but that person is 460, so... Um, now, mm. as far as that plan glo g glows, as far as that plan goes with the two rooks, and then mm. you're not going to be able to infiltrate or beat me up on that side of the board on H and G, as you were saying. Like that's called a rook lift mm -hmm. when you go up and over. It's it won't work because I'm too well defended. Like even if they're just pawns and a king, you, yeah. you can't just you know boomerang your rooks <laughs> and then uh, yeah, they can't just go in there. That's not even the right word. I meant catapult, not boomerang. You could just throw them mm -hmm. in and then... But you brought up something very good. You brought up infiltration with a rook. Like, let's say I just go here. I'll just play random, like, mm -hmm. giving my king also breathing room. You have one and one move in this position to continue to make progress and attack something. I want you to find it. You can keep taking space with your pawns, you know, you just like you did with F and G and H, mm -hmm. and take as much space as you want away from me. But there's one move in particular that you need to find. Mm. So the move that comes to mind is actually um, a three pawn to d6. Bishop to d6? Yeah. Because then I can take pawn. But the pawn can take you. Oh, wait. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yes. Be careful. <laughs> That's not the move. Be careful. <laughs> be yeah, careful. yeah. Okay. Um, also think what I'm going to do. There's one move that I could do here to... Dude, I legit don't know. It was with your rook. Infiltrate. Think infiltrate. What does that mean? It means to go in. Uh, yes. D7? My man. Yes. D7. Yes. Uh-huh. Because what, you're pressuring everybody on D7. Yeah, and, and they can't do anything about it. Yes. Well, they can't. Well, they have to, like, play a move to do something about it. Yes. D7. Okay. Nice. Yeah. And this is a good endgame lesson. So the endgame lesson here is, in, like, once 
the way I want you to think about Endgame, by the way, like that's like a buzzword. But mm-hmm. if more than half of the knights, bishops, rooks, or queen have been traded, like mm-hmm. in this case, you have four of your pieces. Right? You don't have both knights. You don't have a queen. It's, it's yeah. an end game. It's two rooks and bishop versus two rooks and knights. We're, we're in an end game. Mm-hmm. Uh, the only thing that I can do here is I can play the move rook c8. This is like total cocoon defense. Everything uh. is barely holding on to each other. <laughs> like, yeah. Now, at this point in the game, Myth had a little bit of difficulty breaking through my rock-solid defense, and so I transformed the position over about 30 minutes, and I wanted to cut that part out because it was a little bit slow. Now, let's see how Myth is able to convert the endgame. Okay. Ooh. Interesting. I meant push the G-pawn and lock it, but this actually is... This is interesting. Okay, what if I take this way? Then I take. Nice. If I take you? I take. We've traded off a few pawns. Now, you have what's called a past F pawn. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a pawn that has no pawns hindering its, its advance. So, uh, yep. I, I have a past H pawn, technically, but... I mean, good luck. From my pawn it's not going anywhere so mm. let's do this what do i want you want my bishop do you have to move it do i have to move it i do have to move it no you can protect it too oh i can protect it with oh with my king yes true yes True, 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 true. Would you like um, for me to trade my knight for your bishop? I would. Yes, you'd love that. It would make your game so much easier because I would just be left I with the king of pawns. I would love that. Yes. And uh, somebody might take it because they're like, ha, I got his bishop. I can't lose now. Mm-hmm. I don't know why they would think that. But uh, <laughs> now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just keep my knight on. This knight is the only thing I have. Maybe you're going to give me something by accident in the future. Now you have to coordinate your king, bishops, and pawn, and slowly walk them all up the board. Mm-hmm. And that's how you're going to win this okay. game. So, Okay, I know how I'm going to do that. The okay. slow process. King to g3. Okay, so first heart attack that you're going to get now is I just forked your king and bishop. So even late in the game, you want to make sure I can't just get in these checks. So now what do you have to do? I have to get out of check. Oh, no. I'm going to be nice, though. What was my knight attacking? Your bishop. My bishop. What, I could just take it now? Oh, yeah, true. No, no, take it, take it, take it. No, no, no. If I take it, the the, the game, I I want you to, like, I want you to win an endgame. Because then you get... You get the okay. If I take your bishop, you're not going to win this endgame. It's, <laughs> it's not winning anymore. Because then it's another fork, and you lose your pawn. Yeah. So, let's, uh, let's go back. I'll go back. Right. Put your king on I'll F3. 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 So, okay. your mistake was moving your king to G3, and get, you got in the scope of my knight. But then you made the mistake yeah. of leaving your bishop. At least go... Leaving go my bishop you. behind. True. Yes. Okay. So, dude, even with a knight, first. even with a knight, I got so many tricks. So... Just be careful. Uh, now what? You do... Um... Yeah, like, don't worry. I, the whole point of this is you should make the mistakes here and not make them in the, in yeah. the tournament. Oh, that's an epic move. I'm that's... gonna set up... I'm gonna set up a... I'm gonna set up my bishops on the diagonals, yes, so that I can advance this rook, this little rook of mine, and my queen is going to play defense. You either give up your knight, or I move forward. Bishop f2 is uh, is an amazing move. Bishop f2, bishop. Eight. I think you also just called your pawn a rook, though. So, oh, pawn, not rook. Yes, th- th- this is th- this is the journey of learning chess in the beginning. You play an absolutely brilliant move, but then you also pa- call a pawn a rook. There has to be a balance. Well, what if I don't let you put your... I don't, I'm not going to let you put your bishop there. So what are you going to do to my knight? I'm, I'm sorry. I have to be maximum annoying. But no, I didn't this take is your great. bishop, so... Now what? This is great. 
No, this is perfect. I... Well, I'm just going to threaten your knight and push you back. Okay. Slowly but surely. What if I defend my knight? It's a well, battle for the knight. Your knight. If you defend your knight, I'm... Oh, man, I can't put that there, huh? What were you going to do? I can't. No, I can't go. Yeah, I can't go h4. And I... Oh, wait. If, if I go d4, could your pawn take? Yes. Okay, my pawn yeah, your pawn could take, and I could take that, yeah. Um, Good spot. Then I think... Maybe I want to pressure your knight from two angles, then. So where would you move scenario, the bishop? By, by, moving, by moving my h5 bishop to, like, e8, and then, like, you know, starting to move about the map that way? Uh, you can do that with the bishop now. You don't have to go from the other side. You could just do it from the front. What do you mean? I don't know, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, the, the h5 bishop, right? Yeah, you can attack my knight now. You don't have to go forward. You can also go backwards one square. You see? Now you're attacking my knight. <laughs> yeah. Yes. True. Now I have to move my knight. I have no choice. Okay. Yep. I come back uh, this way. What am I doing? You're threatening my bishop again. Yeah, but you don't have to move it if you... Now, you should probably either move it or protect it. But if you can make a stronger <laughs> threat than your bishop, what's worth more than a bishop? What's worth more than a bishop? A king? A king. So how would you... You, you had a plan, right? I, I, you removed my knight from covering that square. Yeah, I so did have a plan? plan. Yep, I'm checking you. On h4. Yes, amazing. Uh, then you're going to have to get your bishop out of danger. Let's say I go yep. here. Now, of course, if you just keep going, I'm going to take your bishop. So it's the mm -hmm. best move for the bishop. The best move for the bishop here... Doesn't have to be anything um. fancy. Yeah, I don't think it has to be anything fancy. I just, I just want to get you. I want to get you out of danger, but I also want to like restrict you, you from moving around the board. So let me see here. Mm -hmm. Um. Hey, oh my god. We... Yeah. E E E six. Because then my knight can't move. Nice. And now, you see what you just did? You did what I just showed you, but on the other side of the board, the bishop dominates the knight. Now. Yeah. <laughs> hey, nice. And my king also is, is in a very bad spot. And now Indeed. your bishops and the king and the pawn. That's it. This is you found your breakthrough. You got your advantage. We got there. I want you to win it now. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm not just gonna sit here and die. I don't. I don't think I'm gonna fight back a little bit. So now who's getting pushed? So now my bishop is getting pushed. I have to stop that from happening. Who's getting but pushed? Then... No, I meant like, what's what's what? next in the what's next in the position? Like, what you got like a nice setup here, but what do you have to do next? Mm -hmm. How are you gonna mm. like? How are you gonna? Who's your most prized possession right now? Right now? Yeah. Like, my like piece wise. Well, I know you're going to say Or just bishops. like in terms of my strategy. Eh, in terms of long term. <laughs> my pawn. Yeah. Can you push it now? I mean, I, I can move it up and I can get your knight out of the way. Kind of. Wait, can I? Yeah, because you, wait, yeah, you, wouldn't you be forced to take with your knight? Yeah, you'd be forced to take with your knight there, right? Why am I forced? I can move my king. Uh, yeah, you could move your king, but then that lets me move my knight, my, my, my pawn, which I know. is good. So I I'm know. doing this. Okay, there you go. So as you're covering that square. Yes. Good. Yeah. Two ways! Um... Rut row. Let's mm. do something called calculation. Calculation. I'm attacking your bishop. Can you push your <laughs> pawn? If you push your pawn... I take your bishop. If, yeah. Well, you will do what? If if you take my bishop. Yes. If you push to f6. You yeah, push, I your push to, to f6. f6. Take your bishop. You, you take me. Him. Yep. Yeah. And then my move after that would be 
to move my pawn again. And now my your pawn is then, one square away from promotion. What can I do to it? True. You can gobble it up. And what will you do? I will gobble you up. Is that a good position? Yeah, I'm up a piece and some material. Are but you, I are, also feel like no, 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 no. I'm not I, winning. Hold on. Are, you're up a bishop, mm. right? In a pawn endgame, you have a bishop, right? Yeah. Okay, that's it. It doesn't matter how you feel. You're winning. Okay. <laughs> it matters how you feel sometimes. True. In this case, you just did everything. That's how we scare sometimes ourselves. Sometimes I would just chess. go and assassinate your pawns, right? Yes. There you go. Yes. There you go. So push the pawn. But how do I... Okay. How do you what? What were you going to say? No, 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 no. Never mind, never mind. I, I, I got it. I, I just... The best move is the best move. So, like, you did it. You did everything. Yeah. You got all the way. But in chess, we're like, I don't know if I'm winning. Like... No, you just yeah, saw everything. The, the, issue, the issue that I find myself is like, yeah, like I don't know what the right move is most of the times. And I feel like it literally, a lot of it is just like going through the, the process and learning it. You yes. know what I mean? Yes. Like the like, reason that's I'm able, the most difficult thing for me. The reason I'm able to just point you in this direction is like, you, you have a few moves. You don't need to necessarily go for this route, but let's go for this mm -hmm. route. And by the way, I could have brought my king back and delayed a little bit, but I want you to... I want you to finish this game. I want you to just conceptually you assassinate your pawns, right? So yeah. what does that mean? That means, oh, so, but you know that's what I'm trying to do. Well, so like I'm trying to go for, uh, for example, like this black pawn here. So like taking it up and then getting it out. Um, but I also need to figure out a way to actually get these. Um, I feel like I got I to gotta get the, the, these other pawns or like get your king to the other side of the board so that I could use those pawns to help me checkmate you. Or, I mean, or there might be a, just a normal checkmate that I could do with, like, bishop and knight that I can't get out of my brain. Everything that you just said is exactly what you have to do. You have to go get my pawns, okay. you gotta queen one of those guys, or both, or two queens, and yeah. win the game. So, who's gonna win those pawns? Because you have a light squared bishop, you, they, they doesn't see those pawns, so who's gonna win the pawns? I'm going to win the pawns. Which piece? <laughs> which piece is going to... Wait, what do you mean? Well, you want to go win my, my A pawn, my B pawn, my C pawn. So which of your pieces yeah. is going to go do that? My king. Yes. So just go. Uh -huh. Just go. Let's go. I'm just go. I'm going. Nice. I like it. Aggressive. Hostile. Love to see it. Um, your bishop will monitor mm -hmm. the movement of my H pawn. Does that make sense? You see my H pawn? It could go all the way down, but yeah, not if your it. bishop stops it. Yeah. What if I go here? What am I doing? You're trying to stop me from monitoring your pawn. I want to take your bishop. And if you get tunnel vision and push your yeah. king, you lose the game. I take your bishop, I queen, I win. You throw your computer because that's how chess works. Yeah. So save your bishop. See, bishops are faster than kings, so you can now move your bishop where? I can move my bishop, like, here. Yep, and it's going to take me two turns H5. to get to you. And in that time, you will go... I can attack! Good. I will go... I'll, I'm going to... Well, I got to start from the top down, so I'm going to go this way. Nice. I, I think both are fine. I like this because you got to go to the base. You got to go to the base of the operations. I go here. Mm -hmm. I go here. <laughs> I go here. There you go. You can also go all the way back to D1. All the way back to D1. Yeah, that's, that's true. Fine. Yeah. Um... I push my pawn. Oh. Let me think here. Okay, no, I'm not bothered by that. Good. Yummy. Four? This was good. It was a very good lesson. We got through three stages of the game. All three. Mm. Now the problem is that now you need 10,000 games like this. <laughs> right, yeah. It's just as hard, man.